one show, one drink. We are back with you again, our, our, our fans and friends all across the uh, podcast universe. How are we, boys, on the East Coast? Living large, loving life. It's a joy. Nothing but we a joy. We are just fantastic. It is a banger of a week, is all I'm saying. It's early in the week and we're drinking, so I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> oh, by the way, by banger, I mean it's, you know, banging your head against the wall kind of week. Now, before we get going, um, we're recording this episode of One Show, One Drink during Super Bowl week. And you two boys are in the throes of possible victory living in the greater Philadelphia area. Gentlemen, your thoughts. My thoughts? Before the game. Before the big game, what do you think? I uh, I can never count Andy Reid out. He is a terrible big game manager, so I would expect him to blow this game for Kansas City, but he could just as soon somehow turn himself into a genius and mess everything up for us. What do you think about his beard? I can't say anything because my kids keep calling me Andy Reid, so <laughs> maybe my beard has to go too. Uh... Now, do we have a prediction? I think the Eagles will win 31-21. 31-21. 31-21, huh? Hmm. Are they plus 300? Is that what they are? Uh, let's say, let's say sure, why not? I don't even know what that means, gonna, but whatever. I don't know what it means either, uh, but it sounds like a thing. Um, what is the NFL odds on FanDuel? They say, let's go. I don't understand what this means. Uh, Kansas City minus 110 on the spread. Spreads one and a half. The money line, Kansas City plus 104, Eagles minus 122. Uh, I don't know what all that means. You bet $122 to win 100. That's what that means. Oh, there you go. So so the plus the plus you're getting odds, the minus you're giving odds. Got it. So okay. you got to bet more to win 100. It's all to bet Somebody's 100. Somebody's a gambler. 100. Somebody has I a just, problem, I'd say. I, I, could, I could stop any time. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Well, you know what? Speaking of stopping I'm not a quitter. Time, instead of stopping... Why don't we start and I'll hit the uh, the little intro. There's Go an intro? It. There's, There's an, an intro. intro. I'm going to run the intro. Ooh. And then we'll get into it. I think it's with Jimmy the Greek and Phyllis George. And, um, <laughs> right. Is Brian Gumbel involved? I haven't Brian seen Brian Gumbel. It's of our <laughs> CBS Sunday morning sports betting show. That's part of the podcast now. <laughs> no, how are we going John Cameron Swayze. How about John Cameron Swayze? <laughs> I don't know that he was big on betting football, but I don't know. It's just fun to say, John Cameron Swayze. <laughs> it's majestical. All right, I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the play button. I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. Hit it. Hit the damn thing. Welcome to One Show One Drink, part of the What We Watch When We Drink podcast from the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network, where we take one show or film and pair it with one boozy beverage. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Audible and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also find us on boozedancing.com. And if you have any questions, comments, show or drink suggestions, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We are back. Welcome to One Show, One Drink, the mini-sized version of the What We Watch When We Drink podcast on the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network. It's a kind of a simple recipe. We take one TV show or one movie, add one adult beverage, Maybe some ice, maybe not. Maybe some shaking, maybe not. Mix and voila, we have. What, what do we have? Whatever, whatever this a is. Podcast. <laughs> whatever this. We is. have a podcast. We have a show. I, I, I have to immediately complain because, well, that's what I do. Um, <laughs> it, it appears there is more than one drink here. There wow. is. I think you're. I think you're. Three drinks, one distillery, though. I, I would say one true. show, that's one true. distillery, three drinks. Yes. It's well, they're they're one. they're the little bottles. If we stack them up, maybe it's one drink. Maybe <laughs> this is the <laughs> mini version of the longer podcast. Sure. Yes. So, um, so we've traveled all over the world on this show. Oh, we have. We my have. feet are tired, and boy, my arms are tired. <laughs> That's right. We've been to what? Well, we've been everywhere. We've been to Scotland. We've been to Ireland. We've been to uh, Israel. We've been to Wales. Wales. Israel. India. California. Wait. Virginia. United States of America. We've been all over the place. Yes, Canada. Yes. Canada. Canada. We just okay. went to Canada. Great White North. Yes. Where are we going tonight? Tonight, we are going to a far off land, New Zealand. Whoa. Now, that's not down under, is it? Can we say down under? I think it's under down under. Whoa, that's really down under. 
What are we going down in our four? We have a whiskey from our fine friends at Impex Beverages from New Zealand. It's a New Zealand single malt whiskey. They sent us three samples. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Is it Pocino? Is it Pocino? Pocino? I, I think there's a, a line over the O. Maybe it's a long O. Like Pocino. 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 Okay. Not unlike the Poconos near you. Actually, I think it's very unlike the Poconos, but close. So Pocono is the name of the distillery in New Zealand. Not a very old distillery, kind of new, and now coming to the United States. So, you know, usually when we have a whiskey, I like we try to like pair it with something that's either from the same country, usually the same country, because it's really tough to, there's not really a whole lot of whiskey in movies, I don't think. So I figured, why not watch a film that is was made in New Zealand with a cast from New Zealand, with the New Zealand director who are we, who, whom we are very familiar with, the great Taika Waititi. And the film is Hunt for the Wilder People. Is it The Hunt or is it Hunt? It's Hunt for the Wilder People. Not to be confused for Hunt for Red October? Correct. Uh, no. Just different. But there is a connection. There is a connection. There is a good connection. We'll get to that connection. We're going to get to that connection. We'll get to that. We'll get to it. Okay, we'll get to it. Circle back. So before we get to the movie, let's start with uh, some of this uh, interesting new whiskey that's come into the States. Um, does anyone have any notes about the distillery itself? Uh, I've got the Impex site up. I could read what okay. they have to say about it. Sure, let's do that. Pocono New Zealand Single Malt Whiskey. In 2017, Pocono Whiskey was founded with a vision to put New Zealand on the map as a producer of single malt whiskey. It is the largest single malt distillery in the country. Today, the Pocono Whiskey Company handles all processing on site at a state-of-the-art distillery with maturation warehouses, filtration and bottling facilities, and a fully functional cooperage. Everything done here is, is driven by a goal to create one of the world's great single malts. Batch production, long fermentation, and slow distillation are just a few of the things that help make them different. As craft distillers, they are also able to focus on quality over quantity and on doing things their way, not the easy way. Using only pure volcanic spring water from the North Island distilleries surrounding volcanic hills and family farm barley from New Zealand's rich, fertile South Island, Pocono selects only the finest casks to mature their precious spirit and the warm subtropical local climate accelerates its maturation and flavor development. All of this allows Pocono to produce single malt whiskey with exceptional body and flavor. Whiskey that captures the pure spirit of Aotearoa, New Zealand. However you say that. Easy for you to say. It's a lot of vowels. So our first one is the Pocono Origin Single Malt 43%. Um, is there anything on the website there, Ange, about it specifically? Pocono Origin celebrates our unique place in the world, produced from the finest local barley and unrushed through fermentation and distillation to enhance body and flavor. We mature it only in first fill bourbon casks. It is an incredibly... Well, I'm, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. I don't want to lead the witness. Yeah, too many tasting notes, right? Pump the brakes. Let me pump the brakes. Okay. I'm brakes are pumped. Did I'm you pour? away. Poured. I did not pour yet. I've been nosing. Oh, of course you have. I'm nosy. I just opened it up, and you know what? I I I I got a nice scent immediately. I got a whiff. Sure. Immediately. Are you ready for a a ching ching? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on a second. Hey, give me, give me, give me one second. Hey, let me just put the lid back on here before I spill it and make a mess and you know ruin keyboards and all that stuff. So, all right, hey. folks, <laughs> gentlemen. Cheers. 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 Okay. It was so close. All Not right. too bad. Eh. Not too bad. All right. It's really very sweet on the nose. Malty. I think it also, it'll, yeah. yeah, it smells malty, a little grainy. Yeah. Sweet, fragrant. Biscuity. Get a lot of vanilla. Yeah. Maybe a little a little pear. Did you say it was first filled bourbon cask? Yes. Yep. First filled bourbon cask. Yes. I'm getting a little bit of the, uh, the iced animal cracker smell here. Oh, you're getting your iced mm -hmm. animal cracker. Any, uh, any uh, <laughs> what's that one? Ice what's your crackers. favorite one? Lyle's golden syrup? No golden syrup, just the iced no animal crackers. No golden syrup, okay. Are we going in? I'm going yes. in. I'm going in. Ooh. That's got some bite. That's hot. A lot of bite. That is shockingly hot. I mean, not in a bad way. That's not a complaint. I'm just saying it's, it's got a bite to it. Does the impact site say 43% like the label says? Yeah, it says 43%. It's, wow. it's a little, so does it's a little hotter. And the website does yeah. too, huh? The interesting thing is it, it, I didn't get any vapors on the nose. No, and not at all. This no. has a little bit of a punch here. But more peppery? Is it yeah. the same peppery? Is peppery, spicy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Salty. That's uh, nice. Yeah. No, that's pretty good. That's different. It's not at all what I was expecting. Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Not that it tastes like rye, but it kind of has that, if it was 100%, 100% rye, it has that kind of mouthfeel to me. Yeah. You think? Like it's yeah. spicy on the sides. Um, I don't know. I'm not getting that. That's good. To me, it has like a... Um, it has like a single malt quality to it, to me. I mean, like yeah. like a scotch. Like I'm trying to think, like what it would remind me of. Almost like something out of like Pandaren. Oh yeah, 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 yeah like the, the Welsh guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or even yeah. the other one, the Spirit of uh, was it Yorkshire? Yeah. Yorkshire, yeah. It had that kind of quality to it, you know, a little malty, like you said, you know. But uh, like the nose was a little sweeter, but it's not that sweet on the palate. No, 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 no. The second hmm. sip is, I think, way sweeter. Yeah, it's nice though. I like it. So we have got our first single malt from New Zealand on our palettes. Let's talk our movie. We didn't reveal yet, did we? We did not reveal the name of the we type didn't of movie. Reveal. Did we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. did we? Oh, we the Hunt for the Wilder People. We did. Hunt for the Wilder People, correct. Okay. During your nap. That's when we did it. Oh, I'm sorry. 2016 uh, movie from New Zealand. And I think you have found a pretty good little uh, write-up on what this movie is about. It is an IMDb review by a Mr. D.H. Wong. Hunt for the Wilder People is a New Zealand film starring Sam Neill and directed by Taika Waititi of Eagle vs. Shark, Boy the Movie, and Thor Ragnarok fame. Based on the book Wild Pork and Watercress by Barry Crump, its unique charm and humor, with an OU, boosts the appeal of what would have been an otherwise generic bonding story. Ricky Baker, played by Julian Dennison, a juvenile delinquent, goes on the run from Child Protective Services in the New Zealand bush. Reluctantly joining Ricky is his surly foster uncle, Hector, played by Sam Neill, who was forced to bond with his nephew while trying to find ways for them to survive in the wilderness. Eventually, a nationwide manhunt is launched by the police to swiftly bring the two of them to justice. Funny, poignant, and well cast, Hunt for the Wilder People revels in a unique, idyllic quirkiness that could have come only out of somewhere like New Zealand, which I said in the beginning. The film's dramatic moments always hit home and never feel like they were inserted merely for cheap emotional effect. The humor, which is very dry and tongue-in-cheek, frequently adds to the film's likability and unconventional tone. Newcomer Julian Dennison shines as Ricky Baker, a rebellious young boy with a heart of gold, and Sam Neill plays off him quite well as his irritable foster uncle. This guy gave it an 8 out of 10. I go a little higher. I go 9 out of 10. Well, that's pretty high praise from you. I really liked it. I've seen it a couple of times. I saw it with uh, with my boy a couple of years ago, and I don't know how we stumbled upon it. I think I saw it on uh, you know one of the message boards talking about you know little cult movies to check Things out to watch. Yep. Yeah. So we gave it a shot. I, I'll admit, and I think you said the same thing when we talked about it a little bit that you were a little bit hesitant at the beginning, but it eventually won you over. Yes, I had not heard of this movie um, at all. So when you mentioned it uh, as an option for us. I said, what the hell are you talking about? And um, <laughs> pleasantly surprised. You know, it's basically a buddy movie. It's heartwarming. It's fun. It's energetic. It's sweet. You've got people you don't know, of course, except for the main one of the main characters. Um, it's just like watching an independent film, which I guess it kind of is. Isn't it, it is an independent film, right? yeah. Right. And I think it was primarily financed by the New Zealand government, right? It's not even independently yeah, financed. So. Right. Right. Um, I don't know how well it would have done at the box office. I didn't see anything about that. Uh, I got box office numbers here. Go for it. I don't even remember it coming out, to be honest. I don't either. Uh, it would seem like it's one of those movies you find on Netflix, you know, just by chance. Hey, guess where it was? Netflix. Was that Netflix? <laughs> just by chance. <laughs> just by chance. That's, That's right. Funny. Uh, so U.S. and Canada box office was five point two million. Gross yeah. worldwide twenty three point nine. Yeah, and that seems about right for this kind of movie, right? It's not... A modest hit. A modest hit, yeah. Um, it really is sweet. Yeah, like you said, it's a really nice movie. It starts off slow with builds. Yeah, it gets a little silly at the end, but it's fun. You know, all of a sudden yeah. it's like Road Warrior. Right. <laughs> which which <laughs> kind of comes out of nowhere. The word quirky is definitely... Should be in the title almost, because it, it is quirky. It fits the vibe that Taika Waititi is all about. He's a quirky writer he's a quirky director all of his things are in that vein yet there's always heart to all the stuff he does whatever the show is and you don't have to go too far with him to realize yeah i'm a silly guy but there's a point to all this and he tells a great story 
and he makes you laugh and he makes you think he, he's just enjoyable as a, as a filmmaker. I think. No, I would agree. I think he's got a development deal with FX. So he's doing a bunch of shows with them. And then, you know, he's got the, the Marvel angle with the, with the uh, two Thor movies with Ragnarok, which was really good. I think it's funny. He did what we do in the shadows as a movie. Then yes. this hunt for the wilder people, then Thor Ragnarok. All the it same makes, genre. I can see. Yeah. I can see making. It's like it made the same movie over and over again. <laughs> it's his jam. All these. They're yeah. his jam. And then you've got Jojo Rabbit, where he plays Hitler. Yeah, Jojo Rabbit. That's right. Yeah. Then he does Jojo Rabbit, and then another Thor movie, and then Next Goal wins, which is like, okay, these again, they're not the same movies. What are you doing? Yeah, well, you're Focus. trying to pigeonhole them. Why are you trying to pigeonhole, Mike? Focus. What I love about this movie, I, mean, I don't know. This is a cl- cliche a bit. But movies that come from Australia and New Zealand tend to use the country almost as another character in the cast. Oh, absolutely. Right? right? Absolutely. And the, the setting settings of this movie are just as big as the main characters are or as the bit players are. You cannot watch this without thinking of, oh, my God, the, the bird that just flew by or the, that big tree or that big mountain or the, the, the stream. It's the lake. just ever present yeah it's beautiful the nature part of this is just you know you walk away from a scene thinking i need to go to new zealand in my life one time i need to go there right it's, it's like a travel far. it's it far. is very far it's many it's many hours far. away by, nah. by car yes very very far <laughs> away well you know if you travel by map you won't have a problem that's true good yes. point yes <laughs> That's right. Really you need to travel by yeah. that. That's, that's the way to do it. <laughs> it's really yeah. That's another movie so, for another time. That is another movie. Should we go to another whiskey real quick, and then we can go? Yeah, back let's, to let's jump that. into the whiskey again, and then we can go back to okay. like talk about the cast and all that good stuff. Yeah, go yep, through yep. the cast. Yeah. All right. Yep, yep, so yep. yeah, let's move on to a second whiskey. Our second whiskey from Pocono is called Discovery, another single malt, and forty three percent. Um, Ange, do you have the uh, notes there on that one? Yeah, I do. I Crash do. as not? he as he falls into <laughs> a large lake in New Zealand. Uh huh. Oops. All right. No, I, I knocked over the bottle, but luckily it wasn't the one that was open. So uh, okay. So this is the Pocono Discovery. Pocono Discovery yes. celebrates our unique place in the world. First, we carefully select parcels of stock which have been fully matured in first fill bourbon, Oloroso, and. Pedro Jimenez. Jimenez. Love it. Pedro Jimenez. We then lay these back down in cask to allow them to marry perfectly together. And I'll stop there. It's a rich and complex whiskey. So it sounds like they're putting them in three different barrels, not finishing them. Yeah. Okay. Right? Is that what it sounds like? They're putting them but, and then they're, like, their finish is to take the three different barrels and kind of just blend them. I think you're right. right. Yeah. Is that, is that what they're doing? Like. That's what it sounds like they're doing. It sounds like it. Yeah. It does yeah. sound like that. Because it then allow them to marry perfectly together. I think that means at the end, correct. Yeah. Oh, yep. so well, and I'm guessing Ooh, well, because they're not terribly old whiskeys, they only started in 2017. Yeah, you don't no. really have time to take a first fill bourbon and then age it in an Oloroso or a Pedro Menes cast because yeah. Well, you, oh, you mean like three years old? Finish so it. We, we and don't finish have, it again. Yeah, we don't have we don't have 18 months to go and put this in something else. So, so instead of a triple cask kind of thing. They'll just do right. all three and blend them together, but I'm resting. Yeah, it, it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna like I'm a Solero system or something to go and put it together. Okay, yeah, 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 I gotcha. I gotcha. All right, shall we uh cheers? No cheers? Cheers. No cheers. Can sure. you cheers too much? Cheers. You can't cheers too much, can you? Can't cheers too much. Yeah, your help. Cheers. cheers, boys. Cheers, football. There you go. Well, you can you can smell the sherry. Oh, big time. This one, this one. Now, see, and I don't know if it because I read ahead, but I got a big hit of chocolate. Huh. I didn't get the chocolate. Yeah, I'm getting more like the the stone fruity kind of stuff. Oh, I get like, hmm, you get a lot of dark fruit on this one. Mm-hmm. You know, some uh, some cherries and some dark brown sugar. Mm. What do we think, Aaron? You're doing a lot of nose in there. I know. Um, it's funny. I don't get that chocolate thing at all, but oh. I definitely get the 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 sherry and kind of the vanilla notes a little bit. I think the Oloroso is going to be biggest in this. This is my this is my. I'm betting. What's the money line on that? Plus seven hundred. Minus one ten. Minus one ten. Damn. Minus one ten. That's two disparate lines. Minus you know what it is? Because I'm I'm like with MGM. I'm doing the MGM bet. No, you're trying to move the money. That's what it is. You're trying to balance your book. You don't care whoever wins or loses. You need to make everybody lose. 
You want everybody to lose based on the money line. Uh-huh. Sure. Let's listen to him. <laughs> listen to him. Well, that's what they do. They balance the book. You know what we got here? We got a future sponsorship deal. We got he's a spokesman right there. He's a spokesman oh, right there. The book. Fantasy whiskey leagues. That's right. They were they were showing one of these on uh like Brian Goebel's HBO show or one of those things where they were showing the guy in Vegas who would call up the biggest like offshore money Oof. guys he could get. Wow. And he'd say, If if the game was three points, how much would you bet? If the game was three and a half points, how much would you bet? If the game was four points, how much would you bet? Just to see what this guy thought, because whatever he did would move the money for everybody else. Wow. Hmm. That's big money. Dude, and they're the just lines. trying to make sure everybody loses. It's three and yeah. a half points, and yeah. congratulations, everyone lost. On the the taste, it, it's not as uh, as peppery as the first. I guess the no. sherry has rounded it out. But I did get a little bit of a little bit of chocolate, like a like a chocolate covered cherry kind of flavor to it. it this good. is all up front. This is like all up yeah. front. I'm not getting nothing from yeah. like the middle back. No, it's all up the front. first one I had it all on the sides. Yeah, this one's in the front. Why does whiskey hit different areas? Of I don't know. I think it's because your your tongue is built to to sense different things at different places. This really is. I, I I'm not even sure I see the connection between the two, but they're obviously made the same way, except for the barreling. Mm-hmm. Um, right. They feel very different. And yeah, built, and this is really good. I really. Yeah, this is nice. You know me. I'm not the big sherry. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, you like. But this. it's it's yeah, it's really not good. overly sherry though. But it's not like it's no, not super tannic. No. No, 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 no. A little dry, but it's not like it's, it's not like a big pucker. It is not a sherry bomb, for sure. Yeah, no. and it and it doesn't have that cherry finish. And so maybe I that's do, why you like it too. Yeah, I do like Oloroso finishes. If I had to pick, and I, I do like PX ones too, but I do like Oloroso. So and this is so feels a little Olorish, yeah. Olorosa ish. It's like a little bit oily too. Hmm. It's a little bit, little bit oily, just a little bit, not a lot. I also think it it tastes a little bit older. Then probably it is, hmm. and that might be the the marrying of the casks and getting enough of the the uh, Olorosa sherry in there, which always seems to make it taste older. They're both thin to me on the mouth, but this one's heavier, yeah, right. than the first one. Yeah, it's good though. It's um, it is nice. I like that. That's very good. I could say is no whiskey left behind no, no whiskey, whiskey left behind no whiskey left behind no right 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 okay <laughs> and i'm gonna say that all night long now um please don't where were we okay back to our movie <laughs> hunt for the wilder people uh the 2016 movie from new zealand a fun small little movie we were going to talk a little bit, I think, on this little segment uh, about the folks, um, the, the cast, who these people are. The big name, of course, the the star of this movie is someone we were all Vasily. familiar with. <laughs> his, name, his name is Vasily. No, his name, uh, of course, is uh, known well to the American public, Sam Neill. One thing only. Wrong movie, Mike. <laughs> Wrong movie. Oh, sorry. Uh, he plays um, Heck Wilder, uh, Weck, uh, Fal- uh, Faulkner, who yes. um, is the f- the husband of the woman who wants to foster this child, Ricky Baker, and um, has to take responsibility for the boy after his wife suddenly passes away after like a day and a half of um, being in charge of the kid. And he becomes the surrogate dad, uncle to our our friend Ricky Baker. Sam Neill, we can talk about Sam for a minute, cannot do anything wrong pretty much in my book. Um, nope. He is I just a great uh, actor of his generation. Um, probably doesn't get enough fanfare for what he has accomplished. He's been in so many wonderful roles over the years from very, very um, very different kind of things. He, he plays comedy well. He plays drama well. Um, what was the movie on the boat? Uh, Dead um, oh, Dead Calm. Dead Calm. Dead, Dead Calm. Calm. Oh, that was good. Not, that was really good. It was a great Dead movie with, uh, I can't say that. Is that Mar- uh, Nicole Kidman? Sam Neill? Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Yeah, Sam- Nicole Kidman. And, uh, and Billy, Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Billy, Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty frightening, dramatic movie. And then you yeah. get this. And, and he's in Hunt for October. 
he just does so much so well and he's so welcoming as an actor i think you feel very comfortable around him watching him he's got a 50 year career didn't you say earlier or before he's we came 75 on 75 years old no he's yeah i'm sure he's got a 50 i'm surprised it's not a little longer i'm sure he's not i'm surprised he's not a child actor the first time I ever saw him in, a, in a, well, I don't remember if I saw it or not. I mean, we're talking years ago. He was in the second The Omen movie, or the third. Oh, was wow. it the third one? Third Omen. Third, third, third one. one. Yeah, the, the Final yeah. Conflict, where he plays Damien. So yeah. I'd actually now I'm kind of curious to go back and see it. And uh, I remember him from A Cry in the Dark, and then Dead. Oh Calm yeah, 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 yeah. And then The Piano, where he made movies like yeah, Bang Bang Bang. Yeah. Like all four of those movies are really good. I just want to know how he gets Sam out of. Sir Nigel John Dermot Neal. That's his real name. From? There's no <laughs> Samuel in there. He's working under an alias. Uh, that's his funny. name is Nigel. It's his acting name. Wow. Dead Calm was 1989. Yeah. That was before Red October. Yeah. A long time yeah. Ago. yeah. His, his list of movies is fairly, you know. Hey, don't forget long. Jurassic Park. Well, that's not counting the Jurassic Park movies, you know. Yeah, that's that's a fair, that's a whole lifetime there. You know, until you Google him, I didn't realize he was actually born in Ireland. You like, you think he's an Australian or New Zealander, and, and you're like, wait, you were born in Ireland? <laughs> yeah, he moved there when he was a kid or something, right? I think. Yeah, like, he was born there. His, his dad thing. was working there. Yeah. Yeah. So he just brings such wonderful depth and comfort to to all of his roles, even even when they're not so nice. Maybe. It's a good term. And in this story, too, he's just he's a gruff old man, older man, old man. He's our kind of guy. He's our, he is. Yeah. He's us in, in 10 years. And uh, that's probably he, not good. He lives in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really. What do you mean? Trend, 10 years. Really well to us. Speak for yourself, pal. I'm there. I got the beard and all. He lives out in the middle of nowhere with his wife and in doesn't the bush. want to be near people in the bush, in the hills. And doesn't really want things to change. And then, of course, this this kid comes into their lives who doesn't really want to be there himself. This uh, uh, what middle school age kid, and yep. um, and all of a sudden, then he's forced into having to take care of him. He's just so Sam Neil. He he's rugged. He's rough. He's he he's a bushman. Um, he has to become a father figure, and he is a survivalist, and he wants to do the right thing. And he ultimately he does, and ultimately he becomes this, this the things that Ricky Baker wants from him he becomes and needs and and needs and it's really beautiful and it's really beautiful the way Sam Neil takes the character it's great it's the kind of movie that probably gets nominated for some independent spirit award or one of those things right it, it doesn't get yeah. nominated for an Oscar. You know what it gets? It gets the What We Watch When We Drink Must See Movie Award. That's right. It does. And the certificate is in the mail. Hey, maybe we can get some wine. Maybe Sam will send us some wine. Oh, well, he sent us wine. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe he'll send us some wine. Oh, oh, oh because we're so nice. Oh, greasing yeah, our sure. palms with yeah, wine. Sure. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll sure. take it. Why not? Why not? Um, I, I just, you know, his, his, he's just great. Now, his wife, in, in who is just in the movie for a very short time, moment 15 minutes maybe she reminds me of margot martindale um she, she could do that same character i think in in this kind of movie yeah. um she's motherly she's matronly she's she really wants a child she'll take any child <laughs> no matter what the background is and she will she wants that kid in her life because she couldn't have her own kids for whatever reason he spits he lights fires <laughs> and she just wants that whether it's a, you know a great dog or a great kid she wants to be that mom mm. and it's so sweet of, of her her character is so sweet because this kid comes from a very troubled background and she doesn't care she just wants nope. to bring that kid into her life even though her husband is not so fond of the idea um, and then we've got the third. And, and wait, 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 wait. And, and oh, she sorry. won the equivalent of the New Zealand Oscar for oh, playing she. this role as Best Good. Supporting Actress. She was fantastic. I thought she was great. And yeah. she's native New, uh, New Zealander, too. She is from yes. uh, Rima Te Wiata. Now, the other, I guess he'd be the other lead in this movie, would be uh, our boy Ricky Baker. Uh, Ricky is played by Julian Dennison, now, another name I've never heard of. He is great. 
his whole schooling has been like in front of a television and movies because he quotes gangster movies and he quotes rap records and and he just wants to be the rough kid on the block and now he's being forced to live with his family who he doesn't really want to be with and he just wants to go rogue he softens a bit because as this woman passes away suddenly and then he is um forced to over time make friendship with uh, sam neill's character and they go off on this crazy chase across the country uh, across new zealand with authorities chasing him child services chasing them locals chasing them the, the country getting behind them they're they're trying to get away um and all the while our little boy ricky baker grows up a little bit and um and grows closer to uh learns how to live in the wild and how to take care of himself a bit he reminds me of a couple of the kids on in reservation dogs. Yes. Uh, going oh. through cheese and yes. cheese is one, but I, in, I just meant in general that he's trying to figure himself out mm-hmm. and he's going through these big changes in his life. He wants to get away. He wants to be the big guy, <laughs> but he really can't yet. He's not really ready yet. Just remember, you know, you don't choose the skuck life. The skuck life chooses you. This is true. That, that, that is his saying. <laughs> he was just great. One of the great parts of this movie, he admits fully that he reads a lot. He likes to read. And the way he keeps calm, with he obviously has some maybe some uh, uh, anxiety issues. The way he calms himself is by creating, writing a haiku. And he, there's various haikus in the movie that come out from his, from his tongue and from his pen. And uh, it's a really unique way of um, showing who this kid is a little bit. Well, like I told you before we started up, like, you know, the first couple of times I watched it, I was just kind of focusing on the plot. So I didn't get a lot of the little jokes and all that. Right. And then the last two times, it's like, oh, these little haikus. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. they're just really funny. They're really funny. Here's one. Here, here we go. Ricky Baker reciting a haiku he wrote. Kingy, you wanka, you arsehole. I hate you heaps. <laughs> Please die soon. In pain. Yes. In pain. When he counts them off in his fingers and oh, the syllables. This is great. Yes. And, and the thing yeah. is, Sam Neill's character is illiterate. Right. Can't read. He, he takes a liking to the haikus. He takes a big liking to, to Ricky and, you know, gets a feel for it. It's a buddy movie, uh, on the run movie, and both characters grow. They reward the buddies. Uh, Sam Neill wins the best supporting actor. And Julian Dennison won best actor. That's the New Zealand Awards. Good for that. That's so great. again, the New Zealand equivalent of the Oscars, three of yeah. the four people nominated won. The fourth person is the uh, the social worker who's trying to track him down. Oh, she's funny. She, she is she plays, uh, Paula. Paula, she's the one <laughs> yes. going after him. She was yes. nominated also. Oh, oh. And, and, and Taika won as director. Awesome. It was a really well-received movie. Uh, the child services person, Rachel House, yeah. who is, she's the one that brings the kid to um, the Faulkner's home to drop him off. And she knows he's a pain in the ass kid, uh, but she gets the hell out of there as fast as she can. Um, and then she sort of leads the military, <laughs> the military and the police. It was the so ridiculous. It was so over the top. Tracking him down. It's so over top. And it's so funny how she kind of takes on this like, you know, commanding role of like uh, spec ops and, uh, yeah. and helicopters and <laughs> and everyone else in this country, and because um, that's what social workers are skilled at. Pretty much, this is what they do. You know, when they're no when child they're left not, behind. You know, exactly. <laughs> no child left behind. Like, government double speak and and running this you know, uh, tactical operation. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and her partner is, is, is funny as well. He's, he's a cop, but he's not really a cop because he doesn't carry a gun. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so great little uh, troop of people together. And there's many along the way that on their travels, they meet three like Larry, Daryl and Daryl out in the middle of nowhere who uh, try to catch them and they, get past those guys and then he meets a family with a, a beautiful girl who uh our boy ricky has a little shine for so there's some adventures along the way and, and you can't forget his dog um his dog tupac tupac the dog <laughs> and um, zag zag and, yeah zag well, by the way by the way tupac him. was played by tuss and oh. zag was played by finn can't have enough canine actors i say um now, by the way by the way there has been a trend where there are some really, really unbelievably good, like, animal actors. Like, did you see the old man? Yes. Oh, those guys are great. 
Those, those dogs, dogs were spectacular. <laughs> John yes. Wick three, uh, Halle Berry's yeah. dogs, spectacular. Yes. Yeah. The dog yeah. in uh, the the Banshees of Inisherin. Oh yeah, he's good too. And the donkey. And the donkey Jenny was fantastic too. Enough. Jenny does not get enough, but should be up for something. Ass of the year. No, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> of every year. <laughs> Um, should we move on to our final uh, Pocono? Our final one drink. The double bourbon single cask, which comes in at a lofty 56% ABV. That's right. This is cask number 21-415. And uh, I think someone said there were only a couple hundred bottles from this cask. 288. 288. Um, yeah. Probably available for sale at a fine establishment retailer near you that does single cast work. So no place that'll let us in, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Once he said fine establishment. Yeah. The kind That's of it, right. We're, We're, out. We're out. We're out. We're out, Fredo. We're out. We can only do mail order. Mail order because they can't see your face. Exactly. See, you understand. Mail order, or, or, or if we meet out back by the dumpster. If we meet out by the dumpster. <laughs> we'll slide something in a, in a paper bag. Yeah. In a paper bag. And maybe bag. you can buy some speakers from the guy in the with the van. All right, let me read a little bit about this. After a full maturation in a first fill bourbon barrel, we decided to re-rack this single malt into a fresh first fill bourbon barrel for six months. Six months? Six months. This unique technique has added incredible richness and depth to the whiskey. And I'll stop there. What's the uh, ABV? 56. It's because I, I'm not getting that on the oh. nose. No, not what? at all. Are you? Did you get it? No. I, I just got it. You, no, you didn't get any hit? get the waft? No, I you don't. Getting it. I just got I just got a big waft of wafer. This different. reminds me of the first one. Yeah. Well, it's bourbon barrel again, right? Just judging by the color, it's a little bit darker. I would think it was a little bit just a little bit older. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Well, it's in a you know it goes into that fresh barrel yeah. for six months. That's going to be the color. color. Yeah. It's funny. It does yeah, on the nose, not fifty six percent. The first hit. Now it calmed down a little bit. Well, I am getting a little bit of like a like a medicinal rubber quality to it. So. Maybe there is some heat to this. We didn't clink, man. Protocols, baby. Cheers. Whoa. What, you're out? Mine's, I'm going to mail mine in. And He's mailing his in. in. He's Jesus. mailing his in. Uh, his was sent by Pony Express. How's that? It came from New Zealand. Very good. DHL. Wow. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm a little rocked here. But I'm sorry. I, I couldn't do the ding because that one, that first sip was, woo, hey now. Hey now. Mm. Hey now. Hey now, he says. Mm. Hey now. Oh, it burns. It was, oh, it burns. It burns? Oh, my lips are dry. So the, it's burning my lips. So if we were doubting, because our, our samples... Is, it's 56%. You know, it's 56%. Our, our samples, Ooh. Our samples are, have a 46% oh, yeah. label on them. Oh, yeah. But this one... Now, I'm glad we did a little this, research. This one expands inside. everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Yes. This one Even expands. a little bit of a finish. A little finish. Mm. I am glad we did a little research ahead of time and saw that this was supposed to be cast strength because I think we all had our head explode with 46 in our mind and then taking this first shot of this yeah. stuff because it is not 46%. I was thinking this well, would be the nice. middle one and we'd save the sherry one for the end. I'm glad we well, didn't. You know what I just got? No. I just got like, you know, like when you have like a peach pie and the crust and there's that little bit of like the peach pie overflow and it gets a little bit like sticky and mm -hmm. sweet. On the yes. edge? I just got that. Yes. Yes. I just got that. Oh. That's a note. Okay. Mm. Now here goes number two. Mm. The second one is a little softer because I'm mm -hmm. waiting for it. Boy, that's a nice flavor. That's nice. Oh, that's really good. I like that. And, yeah. And again, the whole mouth, a little bit more mouth feel to it. Still thin. I'm getting like mm. still thin, but a little more. Lemony. Yeah. Custardy. That's nice. Um, cinnamony. Yeah. Um, Keep going. Yeah, and, and, and definitely more cinnamon than pepper. Where the first one was black pepper, this is yeah, more cinnamon yeah. than anything. I don't get any vanilla. I don't get any of the malty notes that we had earlier. No. No, um, no this has a lot of like really nice sweetness. Yeah, that's you nice. know, and like nice. and like and the, those baking spices a little bit. Not heavy, but it's there. It seems like there is more balance and much more age, even though they, it's six months more. Or maybe more than, you know, not quite six months. I don't know with that second barreling, but it, it seems older. With that fresh oak, you're going you're gonna yeah. to get that pow, yeah. right? And I think we're getting the pow from that yeah. fresh oak, which you can argue that that can be a little bit, um, a bit too much sometimes because it's just too astringent. You don't want to have it, uh, a new oak for a short amount of time. 
or too long because it'll just be too much. Yeah. Short amount of time is, is better. If it was in this brand new oak for a long time, we, we probably would have our heads. <laughs> Boom. Eh. Boom. <laughs> Boy, that's nice. Mm. Oh, the third, the third taste is actually. Boy, that's that's nice. good. I like that. So for a, uh, yeah, that's good for a mm. five year old distillery. That's not uh, bad. They're on the right track. It's pretty good work. So we are back to our movie for a wrap up here. The Hunt for the Wilder People. I think we all fell in love with it. And I actually want to recommend this to my kids to watch as well as my wife. Hey, Mike, I think this movie's family friendly, by the way. Yeah, one of the few oh. things you've actually picked out that's family friendly. <laughs> That's not true. Of course, you also said Scarface was family friendly. So no, I, I never said that. that. The Freshman was family friendly. Yeah, that's true. Hunt for Red October is kind of family friendly. Godfather one and two family friendly. Sure. <laughs> well, no, 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 that's that's family friendly. You meant something totally different. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not so fun for the Barzini family, but I misunderstood. Um, you, you misunderstood. That's what the problem is. You didn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> uh, you didn't understand. I enjoyed this movie significantly. I, I will definitely recommend it. And it really shows New Zealand off wonderfully. I think the humor is just great. I mean, I was just laughing my the humor great. laughing yeah. away just the whole time. You know, right Reese Darby with his little bit, you know, where he's just such a wackadoodle, you know, anti government with the you know, he's he put a colander on his head. Oh, so the man doesn't track you. That's true, though. If you wear the colander, the man can't track you. That's true. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want the man tracking you. Oh, no, you don't. Good. No, you don't. Um, and he had a car. Don't forget they had a car. He, he had a, That's he had right. A truck. That's right. Um, so it's just a really wonderful little movie, and it actually paired really well with this New Zealand whiskey we had tonight. Um, it's quirky. It's fun. It is quirky and fun, and I think these whiskeys are kind of quirky and fun. Um, yes. there, uh, closing thoughts on uh, the, our whiskeys and, and movie for a night. The whiskeys, I thought, were actually they got progressively more interesting yeah. as we went along. So I think we, I think we put them in the right order. I, I think you're right. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I have no complaints on any of them, but that extra thirteen percent ABV really just well, opens it up even more. Wowzers. Yeah. You know, that just kind of just brought a whole lot of fun to the to, just the wowzers. The yeah. Yeah, that was just really, really good. The other two were great too, but the third one. That third one, really, really. I'd go back to that. Okay. One show, one drink. Our one show tonight was Hunt for the Wilder People. And our one drink, which was really one distillery and three drinks, the Pocono uh, New Zealand Single Malt, courtesy of our friends at uh, Impacts Beverages, Chris Udi and uh, Sam Filmus, who kindly sent us some samples for us to go through and we wonderfully put it together with a wonderful cute little movie um from new zealand it all paired well together great little evening guys on the booze dancing entertainment network we've done it again and now it's up to our fine editor to get this done put it out into a a digestible form for our growing public good luck with that <laughs> is that what i do yeah. is that that's what, what you do, do? that's what digestible you do digestible form Digestible form because most of it's indigestible. Uh, it's I, like I hear industrial corn. machinery just shredding things. I'm not sure what he's doing in his house. <laughs> you know, you know what I call the editing room? I call it the abattoir. Ah, I, I thought you, it's a blood. Wow. You, you know, just like it in murder the movie house. when she like. <laughs> well, I could do that too. But you know, like in the movie when when she goes down and what she kills, she kills like a wild boar. She tackles that wild yes. boar and stabs yes, it. Yes, a knife. wild boar. And she's yes. all excited and she gets like blood on her face. Like, ah, yes. look at that, Ricky. That's what editing is like for me. Wow. It's, you, it, it's, what's that, uh, that uh, movie, uh, Showtime series uh, where he's a Dexter? Cop. Dexter. They, well, how did you do that? Dexter. <laughs> where you put plastic up on all the walls yeah. and yes. all the blood that spurts yes. everywhere. None of this is and getting yes. better. None of this is getting better. <laughs> no, it's not. Luckily, there's it's never going to be. There's an auger. There's, it a, you know, there's, there's a... an auger. Right. Never the, none, that'll, none of this will be on the final podcast, so it doesn't matter. Sure it will. Sure it will. Sure it you will. Know, well, like, of course it will. Even better. Even better. You know what it's like? It's like the final scene or, or close to the final scene in uh, Fargo. You're the wood when chipper. the leg is coming out of the wood <laughs> chipper. chipper. The yeah, in the chipper. chipper. That's, that's, that's what editing this podcast is like. It's not yeah. good. It's a bloody good time, good. as the Brits would say. It's a bloody good time.
Boy. Well, on that note, on this bloody good time, when we come back uh, in our yeah. next episode, we will find the out. Eagles will have won the Super Bowl. We will find out how our predictions came 31-21. out. 31-21. Eagles. 31-21 from Mike. And Ange just Bye. goes money Eagles line or something. Yeah, we'll be singing. Come on, Mike. You'll be singing in green. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. All right, gents. That's enough. That's enough. It really is enough. So uh, thank you. One show, one drink on the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network. Thank you, everyone, for listening. You know where to find us. See ya. All right. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Audible, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also find us on boozedancing.com. And if you have any questions, comments, show or drink suggestions, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Where's the music? No, after. We do we just do our Oh my god, are you new? I'm new. We've only done sixty of these. I thought we did it before for the for the one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I like music. You like music? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> this is gonna go in the end again. <laughs> Don't bore the editor. Don't bore the editor. Bad things happen when you bore the editor. All right. Okay. East Coast. That's why. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Cold starts are hard. This is going to be the majestical podcast. Welcome. I don't think that's the word. That's the majestical good. podcast. Yeah. This is the majestical <laughs> episode of One Show Wondering. Don't think it's a word. <laughs>